This video is kindly brought to you by Skillshare. Hi and welcome to Dr. Mix with a banana hat. That's right. Why do I have a banana hat? Because today I'm going to tell you the story of my first viral video on YouTube. I have been on YouTube a lot longer than I thought. For some reason, this came up again and I wanted to share it with you because I think it's quite funny. On August 29th, 2006, I released this video called The Simpsons vs. Star Trek, where I merge the two themes together. Do you know what? I think we should watch it together. Right? So this had 2 million views at a time where the most watched video on YouTube was the uh, evolution of dance with 5 million and I got like 2 million. So it was pretty huge for the platform size at the time. Let's watch it together. So this was my last scrap of dignity on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed it. But uh, all right, you know what? I think that first, I w you know what? I want to talk about why I did the song and why this song came about, why? So this is one of my fixations. I have a lot of melodies in, in my head and I often make exercises out of this melodies that I have in my head. I I'll give you an example. This is one of my uh, earworms. Right? So that, that's one of this that inhabits my head and it has for decades, for real. One that I was particularly uh, fixated with at the time was anything tritone. So this interval, which is three tones, one tone, two tones, three tones. We're talking about whole tones, obviously. So this is a, you know, the famous forbidden interval but you know a lot of music is based on that like for example the simpsons which goes what's cool about the triton is is that if you hit like a dominant chord right so uh dominant seven so flat seven and uh and the third so basically this becomes the root but if you change the root for its triton now this is the third of f sharp and this is the seventh of F sharp. You see what I mean? So, I mean, of I mean, this is pretty basic for people who know harmony, but even when you know it, it's just mind boggling what, what this means. And I kept exploring things in my head. And also, of course, I like Star Trek as well. And Star Trek makes some use of the Triton inside of it. So I thought they have the same rhythm, you know, which is, you know, a bit Broadway, I guess. That's kind of the sound. So I thought I could interchange them. Mm -hmm. 
and so on and so forth. So basically every time I go from one to the next, I basically uh, lead with the melody. I mean, I lead with the harmony where the melody wants to go. I basically kept on changing key at every corner, changing tonal center every time. I got fixated with this, simple as that. So um, I thought, why don't I make an arrangement and be silly? Cause also at the time you have to imagine, I was uh, at my fourth, year in London and you know having been for a long time in the pop industry I was kind of you know I was searching for my musical soul if you will I had my very serious project called Sunlight Square with you know the Steve Gads of the world and 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 Willy Lees and Patty Tucci's and stuff I wanted something where I could just be nuts so I opened up this channel I called it uh, Culture Killer because I wanted to kill culture. And look at my description. You like the big brother, huh? You dig rubbish TV and Jessica Simpson. Sorry. She's a lovely girl, by the way. Don't ya? You hate culture, huh? I'll give you anti-culture. <laughs> you know, and I decided, you know what? This, I'm gonna just be nuts and just be completely unserious, which is the opposite of what I was trying to do with Sunlight Square. So what happened one day, I posted, this was literally my second video on YouTube. And you have to imagine that YouTube at the time had been around for one year because it, it came out in 2005. So being a YouTuber was not a thing. I wake up after having um, uploaded it and I have thousands of messages on my email, thousands. And I don't understand. And I look at them and they're all comments and, and I, think who's writing me and then I I realized that those were YouTube notifications I go to YouTube th this is by the way this is way back machine where you can see how the how YouTube looked like uh, the day after and I saw my video right at the first page right on the top spot and I look at it and it had like 65,000 after like 19 hours that was on I mean that was a lot it went viral and it, I don't know if maybe, maybe some of you will remember it. And actually for whatever reason, I didn't understand that YouTube was gonna be huge or that this could be huge for me. So I kind of, you know, I enjoyed it. I made a couple of more videos and I just dismissed it. I dismissed it. I mean, I, I had to start all over again, 10 years down the line. And to me, the takeaway is the most popular thing that I had done up until that point was something that I did without taking myself too seriously and without being afraid of being silly. So that, you know, it took a while to sink in. The thing is, I think it's just because I was curious and I was experimenting with video so much. I will show you my actual files of the footage of that day right after letting me tell you about Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come to learn and empower their creative minds with thousands of inspiring classes on topics including illustration, graphic design, video, and music. Skillshare is a great place to explore your creativity. I recently enjoyed Productivity for Creatives by YouTuber and entrepreneur Thomas Frank. It shows things like how to shoot better videos, make digital products, and how to achieve a professional mindset, which is something that I really, really believe in. All classes on Skillshare are curated specifically for learning and they have no ads, which is cool. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. I really invite you guys to check out Skillshare, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click in the link in this description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can start exploring your creativity. Speaking of creativity, let me show you the folder of the video session. So on that day, I was actually working on a house track. I literally had positioned the roads this way because my friend Mustafa here was recording me. So those were the days. Later on, I started filming. This was my house at the time. It was called Sunlight Square. It was its a dress. And this is me playing uh, that. That theremin, which is right here. This very theremin. Yeah, I still have it. I don't have the roads anymore. Actually, that was a loan from a friend. 
I didn't have one at the time. Let's see what else we got here. <laughs> this should have been the thumbnail, but there was no thumbnail at the time. At the time, YouTube would select a frame in the middle of the video. So if you wanted a thumbnail, you had to splice something right in the middle of the video. It was wild. Somebody maybe remembers that. So let me show you a bit of uh, raw footage. <laughs> All right, so I was using click, as always. All right, what, what did I do there? <laughs> what a muppet. That's right. All right, let's see if there is anything interesting. Uh, just me turning the camera off. This I think I did on a second take because I only had one camera, AKA my iPhone. I think it was the first iPhone, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so this didn't make it in the final cut. Oh, right. Yeah, the, um, the difficult line. Ah. Of course, phone. By the way, my life has been devastated by constant ringing of my phone. Become a bit better since the internet and smartphones, but anyway. Let's see if I managed to do that line. That was pretty good. Bit dirty, but fine. Let's see, all right, this bit. <laughs> what an absolute maniac. Who does that? <laughs> and you see, this is Culture Killer, so I was quite mad because, you know, Culture Killer is a bit mad. And uh, <laughs> uh, this, this is, oh, this I shot the day after. <laughs> the banana hat. This is that very hat. I'm wearing it now. Banana hat. <laughs> what possessed me? All right, okay, so I was, that's how I did it. Because I can't remember. I put the phone on the, on the, on the floor and I just walked around it. <laughs> Absolute maniac! I think that the very last take is because I was just happy that I got it. So it was like a little bit of a celebration. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my trip down memory lane. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link in the description as well for um, the original video so you can go check it out. Um, but, you know, if there is a takeaway, I think is sometimes when you just let yourself go and accept <laughs> yourself for who you are and you're not afraid of even being silly if that's who you are, then that's when you stand a chance of making something that other people will enjoy as well. I hope you're doing super well. I hope you're staying safe, loving one another, and um, I'll see you next time, right after watching this video next. <laughs> Bye.